Jake, we're going to talk about the butterfly. Now, a lot of people are confused. The butterfly is a safe selection, it's not a style. So there's no such thing as a butterfly goalie. BS. It's like this, saying there's no such thing as a glove save goalie. Are you a blocker goalie, a skate save goalie, a, a stick save goalie? No, you're a goalie. You use stick saves, you use blocker saves, you use glove saves, you use butterfly saves. So butterfly is a save, not a style. That's the way the game's played. It's great because it takes care of the bottom of the net. And we're gonna go through some drills today to work on your butterfly, some with your stick, some without. Now, one thing I commonly see with advanced older goalies, uh, they don't have much flair to the butterfly. A lot of times they don't get good flair. So let's show the camera what a good butterfly flair looks like. So drop in your butterfly, and extend your pads as far as they go to the side. Like you put your knees together and extend your feet out to the side as wide as you can. That's flair. And my goodness, that's a super wide flare. That's amazing to see that type of flare. Now, most beer league goalies don't have that. They don't have the rotation ability in their hips. So they end up having their pads back underneath them with a very tight, constrained butterfly. So one thing goalies can do is keep this right leg here and extend your left leg. That's called the half pad save. And you can reach your stick over and get good stick involvement. And likewise, if it's coming to the other side, you can keep this leg under you and get way more range. So my advice for beer league goalies, if you don't have good flair to your butterfly, is choose to use a half pad save where you extend one leg instead of both. Now in Jacob's case, he's got a super flare. He can do a full wide flare butterfly. Now I'm gonna try something here, Jacob. Keep your wide flare butterfly. When we got a poor angle shot from over to the side here, we don't want to have a full wide flare butterfly because the net's not that wide from the shooting triangle perspective. So on poor angle shots, we constrain our flare. We bring our feet a little bit closer together to fit the shooting triangle. That way, we're not having pucks that are coming wide of the net bounce out here. So, Jacob, when you're in the slot, you want a wide flare butterfly. When guys are shooting off the angle, you can tighten it up and not be so wide. Like one of your famous Anaheim Mighty Ducks goalies, J.S. Jaguar. As you see in the picture here, look at the flare on J.S. Jaguar. And this is where I added in the picture of J.S. Jaguar. Let's get some drills done here and let's look at your butterfly. To start, the first drill we're gonna work on is you're gonna do a full flare butterfly. Whichever side of the net it goes to, doesn't matter. Your butterfly stays the same when you're a full flare butterfly guy. So let's pump some low shots here. See how he does pad saves, stick involvement, your choice. Nice and hard, nice and flat. Here we go. Nice follow, excellent stick involvement, excellent elevation. Nice, four more. Three more. And that one I'd like to get your stick on that one if you can. Yes, perfect. Two more. Last one. All right. Now, we see there, Jacob, what commonly happens. Most goalies have an easier time getting stick involvement on the glove side than the blocker side. And really, if you lean your upper body over, you can get uh, more range on your stick on that. Now, we're going to demonstrate the half pad save, which you might not have done a lot in your life, but we're going to do this. Tommy, let's shoot glove side low, and I want you to try to keep your right pad less flared and extend your left leg. So this requires reaction. You can't do a half pad save by guessing. Sometimes in a butterfly save on a screen tip, you use a guess butterfly, you throw a flare out there. This one, you've got to know, because if you kick out your left pad and it goes to the right side, won't you look like a goof? Let's see, some half pad saves to your glove side low. Nice. And you can still get your stick on that if you reach over on it. Nice. Just ex extend your left skate only. Nice. Right. Let's do the right pad now. Right pad, half pad saves. To the right side. The other, the other right, Tom. And now we're going to do a little breakdown drill here. I want you to put your butt right back on the goal line. Go down in your butterfly with your feet right underneath your butt. No flare at all. Zero flare. This is called the zero flare drill. And what we're going to do here is, Tom, you get to pick the corner, and you're only allowed to extend the leg and stick to the side that it's going to. You have to make a decision here. Pick a corner, left or right, your choice. Yeah. Nice. Good flare. Two more. 
last one. Nice. All right, that's good, Tommy. Excellent. There's two types of butterflies. Back in 1994, before your mom and dad fell in love, Jacob, I wrote an article. It was called Blocking and Reaction Saves, where every goalie only makes one of two saves. It's either a blocking or reaction save. And it's the same with the butterfly. You can do a block butterfly or you can do a reactionary butterfly. And I'll give you an example of the difference. So if you get in your stance right here and face me here like you're on angle and a pass comes over to me right here to Ovechkin, if he's taking a one-timer from here, that's a block butterfly where we deny access and try to have a nice flare. You've got no time to react to which side it's going to, that's a block butterfly. Yeah. So reactionary butterfly is where you got gap and distance. And you got lots of time to decide to put the butterfly down. Now obviously your reactionary butterfly has its place and block butterfly has its place. So you gotta be good at both. So in summary, we like to have a wide flare when you butterfly. And if you're barely goalie and you don't have a wide butterfly, try to do more half pad saves. We extend one leg and keep the other one underneath your butt. Can you do that? Yeah. All right, we're done. All right, Flemmer, great to have you in from California. Thank you. How was your trip up here? It was, it was an easy flight. Easy flight. Now, when you're playing in Southern California, you obviously have to fly to go to all your games and everything you're doing. Yeah. You spend a lot of time in the airplane? Yeah, I spend a lot of time in the airplane, lots of flights. How do you do with your homework when you're on the road a lot, flying around? How do you keep uh, disciplined on that? I do homeschool at an ice rink. Yep. So it helps me so I can just take my computer anywhere and just finish it pretty much all around the country. Nice. I'm speaking to your father, and he said you've got some excellent goalie coaches down in Southern California yeah, helping we, out. Who are some of the goalie coaches that you work with down there that do a great job with you? Uh, Steph Yates is one, and Coach Pete is another one. What's Pete's last name, do you know? Or you just call him Coach Pete? It was like... Man, goalie eye or something. Ah, oh, big long name. That's, so don't worry, I can't pronounce polysyllabic words either. <laughs> so we're all good there. Now, you're close, so you watch the Anaheim Ducks play all the time? Uh, our TV gets blocked out. Oh, that. because you're local. <laughs> yeah. It's a regional broadcast. Now, when you watch Zegris, do you think you could stop Zegris right now? Right now? Yeah. Probably not. Well, you're only 11. In you're a few years? Maybe. You're only 11, right? But you're very talented for 11 year old. We had a great session this morning. We're going back out this afternoon to shoot some cool stuff on the butterfly and some cool drills related to that to help young goalies, beer league goalies be better with their butterfly. Yeah. So when you look at your game as a goaltender, what do you think are some of the best things that you do as a goaltender? What are your skills that are the best? My skills that are the best, uh, it would probably be um, I've been getting a lot better at one-timers right. and passes across an RVH. Oh, nice. So we talked on the ice. I always ask kids, who's your favorite goalie in the NHL? And yeah. most of them don't say Steve McKeegan because I had one game in the NHL. Who's your favorite goalie in the NHL? Igor Shosturkin. Really? Never heard of him? Never heard of him. No. He, he plays in the NHL? Yeah. For who? New York Rangers. He's our starting goalie. Oh, is he? Yes. Oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to look it up, see if I can find him. I've never heard of Igor Shosturkin before. He's awesome, I agree. Now, where do you want to end up? If you could play on any team in the NHL, who would it be? If I could play on any team in the NHL, it would probably be the Oilers. The Oilers? The Oilers. So that's your favorite team, yes. the Oilers? Nice. And you don't like the two goalies on the Oilers? You like Shosturkin better? Uh, I think Stuart Skinner is a great young goalie. Yeah. He, this is his, like, considered his rookie year, and I feel like he's been playing excellent in the playoffs. Right, and he might lead him to the Stanley Cup as we're, we're teaching or as we're recording this right now. Playoffs are on, and he still has a chance. Yeah. Although Toronto doesn't have a chance. They're down three zip. Um, now, you know who their backup goalie is with Edmonton? Edmonton, their backup goalie is, uh, well, Mike Smith is hurt right now, so it would be... Jack Campbell. Right. 
Jack Campbell's from just across the bridge. He's had an up and down year, but there's a good teachable moment there. Yeah. He's still been a great character kid. He's been a great backup goalie. Even though he hasn't had great performances early in the playoffs, he had to go in for Stuart Skinner. Yeah. He wasn't sticking his bottom lip out and he had a great performance and I believe they got a win on his yes, back. So they did. if they win the Stanley Cup, guess whose name's gonna be on it? Jack Campbell. Yeah. Now, when you look at the goaltending route that you wanna take, how do you see your career unfolding? So you're 11 years old, you don't have a career till you're getting paid, but if you end up in the NHL someday for the Edmonton Oilers, how do you think that path would look? Where do you need to go from Southern California to end up in the NHL? What's your path? I feel like I would go juniors, play USHL, then try to go for NCAA D1 with right. some top 10 college. So you probably want to go to a great Miami of Ohio school and um, there's lots of great schools that you could go to. There's Michigan State, Michigan, best ones Miami of Ohio. But what other schools do you think you might be interested in? Miami of Ohio? Um, schools that I'm interested in? I mean, I always thought that Notre Dame was kind of a good school. I mean, Penn State, they just got incredible, so. Right, I love Notre Dame. We had one of my goalies go to school there. He had a full scholarship and he's a great study. I'll put a link in the, in the description below, but his name's Joe Rogers. He's from Port Huron, Michigan. He grew up without a hand, congenital defect, no fingers. So I had Mike Vaughn build him a special glove where he could catch the puck without even having fingers. Never complained about his, his weakness. And he played junior hockey around here and got a full scholarship to Notre Dame. So. I always call up that example because that's a kid that never complained. Yeah. And that's what I like about you. You work hard, you take the direction well, and all your goalie coaches are big fans of yours. So we'll finish this little chat with one question. Yes. If you play in the NHL, what color Corvette are you buying me? <laughs> what, I'm asking, I'm being serious here. What color Corvette? Um, uh, gray? No, um, no, no, forget it. You're not going to the NHL. That's enough of this. Cut, 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 we're done.